Okay guys, hi and welcome back to Wallet Insiders. Today we're going to be talking about Investing 101, A Beginner's Guide. And this article is really just to help you on your way to investing, which includes um, knowing a few key terms and even some investment ideas that you can approach and what you may need to make some investments. Uh, it's really important. It may be a little bit long, a little bit tedious, but uh, stay with me as we're going to go through this article together and um, see how you can be well on your way to investing. So introducing the topic here, we have that investing is the act of committing money or capital with the expectation of obtaining an additional income or profit. Now, this could be done in various forms, such as purchasing stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, and so much more. I mean, investing is literally anything that you can buy and get a return on, right? So it is important because it allows individuals and businesses alike to grow their wealth over time, hedge against inflation, and achieve financial goals, which is so important. I mean, everything is getting really expensive and really hard to, to climb over those life hurdles. And having good, sound investments that could increase your wealth over time is like the best thing that you can do today. So many people believe that investing in stocks is a complex and risky venture that is only meant for wealthy people. Well, that's not true. Okay, investing in stocks is not just for the wealthy. It is a tool that can be used by anyone to build wealth over time. Investing for beginners is not as difficult as it may seem either. And with the right knowledge, and tools, anyone can start investing in stocks online and achieve their financial goals. Now, one common misconception about investing is that it requires a large amount of money. However, the truth is that investing can be done with as little as $10, and it is not just for the rich, as I said before. The rise of online brokers and investment platforms has made it easier for anyone to invest in stocks online and get started with the investment journey. I mean, it's simple as an app, guys. A lot of apps out there, um, you can just view the stock market, make your purchase. Um, you have access to so much that can make you money. You just have to have the right tools, the right mindset, and really stick to the plan that you have, right? So this guide will cover the basics of investing, how to invest in stocks online, and investment strategies for beginners, which is very important when we get to that. We will discuss the different types of investments, how to analyze stocks, and the benefits of diversification, a very big and important thing with investment. Additionally, we will also cover the risks involved in investing and how to manage them, because let's be real, anything that is worth it has risks. Uh, we need to be able to accept that in order to start our journey. Investing can be a powerful tool to build wealth and achieve financial goals. By understanding the basics of investing, individuals can make informed decisions and develop a solid investment plan that sustains. Right, so whether you are a beginner or an experienced investor, this guide will provide you with the knowledge and tools to start investing and achieve financial success. And now before we move on guys, I really wanna let you know that this article will be available on our website Okay, I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can get to that if you'd rather read it on your own instead of hearing me talk about it. But really and truly, just either stick with me or go and source it on our web page. So now we're dealing with the types of investments. And the first one we're going to talk about is stocks. So what are stocks? Everybody hears the term stocks. Yeah, man, I'm trading stocks. Yeah, I have a few stocks in this company, but what are they? Well, stocks also known as shares or equities, represent ownership in a company. When you buy a stock, you are essentially buying a small piece of that company. Companies sell stocks to raise money to various purposes, such as expanding their business or investing in new projects. In return, investors who buy stocks become partial owners of the company and are entitled to a share of its profits. So you can see how buying stocks it's a really powerful thing, right? You don't have to have your own company to actually participate in one and receive benefits from that company. So let's keep that in mind. So how do stocks work exactly? Well, the stock prices are determined by supply and demand. 
when more people want to buy a stock, its price goes up. And when more people want to sell it, the price goes down. It's basically the same in every market, right? If you go out there and the lettuce is like, they're having a crazy festival all across the world or wherever you live. And everybody needs to have a piece of lettuce in their stall for whatever reason. The price of lettuce is really going to climb at that time because everybody wants it. And then the minute that is over, um, the holiday or this, the event is gone, you'd see much, much lower prices on, on lettuce, as the example shows. So definitely it works the same. So the stock market, where the stocks are bought and sold, is actually a very complex system that involves a variety of players, including brokers, stock brokers, investment banks, and individual investors. Now, don't let that scare you, because we're going to navigate through it. And even if this article doesn't provide everything you want on stocks, because this is just general investing, we're going to have other articles that really would give you more of, a, um, of the knowledge that you need to really go towards purchasing stocks on the stock market. So, okay. so you're just taking this in steps, okay? So the types of stocks, well, there are two main types of stocks, and they're common and preferred stocks. They're not very different. Um, but it is good to know the differences because although they're not very different, they have different groups that depending on the type of investment that you made or the person that you are, you would enjoy accordingly. So common stocks are the most widely held type of stock. And when you buy a common stock, you become a partial owner of the company. And bonus, you are entitled to vote on important matters, such as the election of the board of directors. You may also receive a share of the company's profits in the form of dividends. So common stocks, to recap, they are the most common, thus the name, and they give you partial ownership of the company, which gives you decision-making authority depending on the company and what, they, what comes with the stock. Now, preferred stocks are different in the sense that they are less common, but, and they don't usually come with voting rights. But they do come with a higher claim on the company's assets and earnings. And what this means is that should this company go bankrupt, the preferred stockholders are paid before common stockholders. So, I mean, really, it is like added security on um, your investment, right? But you lose the right to vote on certain things. And like I said, depending on who you are and, and your interest in that company and um, the type of investment strategy that you may have chosen, uh, you'd be able to decide which type of stock is best for you. So let's move on. We have the risks and benefits of investing in stocks. There's always risks, like we said. All right. So investing in stock comes with its own set of risks. The stock market can be volatile, meaning that the stock prices, they fluctuate widely. Um, this may be in response to economic conditions like um, coronavirus when a whole bunch of pharmaceutical companies came up into the stock market world, right? There's also things like company news, like if a very, very good director has lost his spot in a company, then what happens to the rest of it, you know? And other factors. Investors can lose money if they buy stocks that decline in value or if they sell stocks at a loss. And so you definitely don't want to, you don't want to buy something that is um, $8 and then sell it back when it's filed. It's obviously going to make a loss, right? It's pretty straightforward, guys. The benefits, however, um, are that despite the risks, investing in stocks can offer um, higher returns than other types of investments, such as bonds and savings accounts. We'll get to that. Um, investing in stocks can also provide diversification, which is rather easy, and that helps to reduce the overall risk of a portfolio, um, meaning that, yes, you may invest in a pharmaceutical company, but you can also take a few shares in a sport company, and that gives you um, variety, and variety is good because should all pharmaceutical companies take a hit, then you'd be safe off with your other investments, right? Additionally, Many companies offer dividend payments to their stockholders, shareholders, sorry, same thing really, which can provide a steady stream of income. 
right so we really want to take that into consideration all the things that stuff has to offer but we want to be wary of the risks and pick something that's right for us so then we have bonds now what are bonds bonds are debt securities that are issued by corporations municipalities and governments when an entity issues a bond it is essentially borrowing money from an investor that bond then represents a promise to pay back the money with interest at a predetermined date in the future. So basically, a bond is like a very legal IOU. <laughs> Their promise is to pay you back once you lend them the money and obviously get it paid back to you with an interest because then what would be the point, right? It would just be like lending your mother some money and expecting it back at the end of the month, I don't know. So investors who purchase bonds are essentially lending money to the issuer, as we stated, and in exchange for this loan, they pay the investor interest payments. And that's typically on a semi-annual basis or until the bond matures. How do bonds work? Bonds work by providing a fixed income stream to investors. The interest rate on a bond is determined by the issuer and is typically based on prevailing interest rates in the market. So they don't just tell you, listen, I'm just going to give you 0.00001% on this. It's really based on the market, just as everything else is. Stocks, real estate, everything has its own um, intrinsic market that it needs to operate within. And a lot of the times that market determines different prices and rates. So when the interest rate goes up, the value of the existing bond goes down and vice versa. Bonds also have a maturity date, which is the date when the issuer is obligated to repay the principal amount of the bond to the investor. So when a bond reaches that maturity date, the investor receives their initial investment back along with any interest that has accrued over the life of the bond. That again is very important. These little details like the maturity date, you definitely need to have things set up in a way that your maturity date aligns with your financial goals or responsibilities. You don't want to take a lump sum of money out of um, your child's college fund and invest it in a bond and then not pay attention to the maturity date being um, in March of the following year when your daughter goes to school in September or your son starts school in September because then you won't have the money back at that time. And that would have been putting a financial strain on you. So we want to make very informed decisions when we're doing investing because money is something that is needed. It's a necessity and we need to be careful what we do with it. So there are several types of bonds um, that investors can choose from. But some of the most common types include government bonds, corporate bonds, municipal bonds, and high yield bonds. Now, government bonds are issued by the national governments and are considered to be the safest type of bond because they are backed by the full faith and credit of the government. I mean, think about that. You purchase a bond um, from a company, uh, chances are that they can go bankrupt or split and dash, you know. But with a government bond, you don't expect an entire government to pick up their stuff and flee their country, right? Because it's the government. So thus the fact that it's safer. It's a safer type of bond. Now corporate bonds are issued by corporations and are generally considered to be risky in government bonds because they're not backed by a government entity, which is what we just explained, right? So they can just leave or go bankrupt making one terrible financial decision and that's it. That's the end there. And with your money with it. Like um Again, we know that the riskier stuff tend to be more um, beneficial in terms of the money that you receive. So, you know, everything needs to be considered. We then have municipal bonds, which are issued by local governments, such as cities or states. They are often used to fund public projects and are generally considered to be slightly riskier than government bonds. And you can see why, right? Because... Uh, local governments absolutely don't have as much pull or power as a government would. High yield bonds, on the other hand, also known as junk bonds, are issued by companies with lower credit ratings. 
and offer higher interest rates to compensate for the increased risk. So, I mean, if you're buying a, a bond, if you're taking a bond with Apple, they have pretty much solidified themselves in the world of businesses, right? So you feel comfortable, you know, that Apple is not just going to burn down overnight. Um, but let's say you've heard about Tamahawks Limited. I don't know. And you've never, you've, you've never encountered these people anywhere before, but they want a bond purchase. Now, they're going to have much lower credit ratings than other um, well-established corporate um, entities. But to basically, um, to support this or to, to help you to accept their deal, they would give you higher interest rates. And that's like their compensation. It's like, okay, listen, we don't have this much ratings, but you know, because of that, uh, we're gonna pay you more. We're gonna give you a much higher interest rate. So those are the four types of bonds that we're gonna cover. Now there are risks and benefits of investing in bonds as anything else. Um, some of these include stable income. Bonds provide a predictable income stream to investors, which can be particularly appealing for those who are nearing retirement or looking for a low risk investment. Again, this depends on the bond, right? Diversification. Investing in bonds can help diversify a portfolio and reduce overall risk because just as stocks, you're not limited to one bond or one type of bond. Now, they also have potential for capital gains. If interest rates go down, the value of existing bonds go up, which can lead to capital gains for investors. However, and yes, you guessed it, there are also risks associated with investing in bonds. These include interest rate risk. When the interest rates rise, the value of the existing bond goes down, which can lead to losses for investors. So, I mean, you will need to choose Choose your, your bonds wisely. There's also credit risk, the chance that the issuer of a bond will default on their payments, which can lead to losses for investors as well. And there's inflation risk. If the rate of inflation is higher than the rate of return of a, on a bond, the purchasing power of the investor's money can decrease over time. Now, I know this may all sound very daunting, and you know, you're like, oh, oh my God, this is tough. Um, we're gonna set you up with with enough information to really get you on your feet. So have no fear, just stick with us, right? So the other type of investment that we're gonna cover is real estate investment. And real estate investing refers to the purchase, ownership, management, rental, and or sale of property for profit. The primary goal of real estate investing is to generate a retain on investment through rental income, appreciation, or both. It, it can be a profitable way to build wealth over the long term, but it requires a significant investment of time and capital because real estate, let's, you can pull up a house on an app, right? Or check out land for sale somewhere and whatnot. But I mean, things like building something, you have to check in on, on, your, um, on your people to make sure that they're carrying out your wishes the way that you want them to um, make certain decisions, uh, do a lot of research. So it really is one of the more time consuming investments um, and also comes with capital, but it can be very rewarding. So let's read on. How real estate investing works. Real estate investing involves several steps. Now the first step is to research and identify potential investment properties. So this includes evaluating the location of the property because I mean we don't want to be in the middle of the jungle unless that's what we're selling, you know, an exotic trip. Um, the property condition because nobody wants to stay in a dump, and the potential rental income. Now, once a property has been identified, an investor can secure financing and purchase the property. After purchasing the property, the investor is responsible for managing the property, including collecting rent maintaining the property and handling tenant issues so i mean you really want to be careful with that because tenant issues can be whew, i won't say any more on that but i mean think about it 
so the investor can generate income through rental payments and or appreciation of the value or pro um, of the property value over time. Types of real estate investments. Um, because we're moving on to the next topic. Well, there are several types of real estate investments that investors can consider, and these include, but are not limited to, rental properties, uh, commercial properties, real estate investment trusts or REITs, and real estate crowdfunding. So for rental properties, these are properties that are rented out to tenants for a monthly fee. The investor can generate income through the rental payments and appreciation of the property value over time. So, I mean, you're not just getting money monthly from um, an, a tenant or an occupier, but with time, especially depending on where you choose, the value of the land and property will increase, you know, as it becomes more populated. And therefore, should you one day choose to stop renting, even the selling of the land itself or the house and land would bring in um, interest on what you would have paid for it. There are also commercial properties, like I said, and these properties are used for business purposes, such as office buildings and rental spaces. Commercial properties can generate income through rental payments and appreciation as well. Um, sometimes they tend to be higher because um, you're renting to corporations, depending on the size of the property and where they're located, can really, really help to increase the value of the property and or the income that you generate monthly. We have real estate investment trusts, REITs, which are investment vehicles that invest in real estate. Investors can purchase shares in the REIT and receive a portion of the income generated by the underlying real estate assets. So that's great, you know, you don't have to take it all on, on your own. And then we have real estate crowdfunding. This involves pooling funds from multiple investors to purchase a property. Investors can receive a portion of the rental income or appreciation of the property value, right? So again, you're not on your own, but you're doing it with multiple investors, one property, and that takes a load off of everything from time to capital needed to start investing. Keep those in mind. And again, we're here at the, at the part that scares us all to some extent, the risks and benefits of investing in real estate. Well, real estate investing has several benefits, including the potential for long-term wealth. Real estate can appreciate in value over time, like we said, generating significant returns for investors. You could buy that property today for $200,000 and either because of development of the place or community over time or, um, you know, good schools being put there, you could sell that back 10, 15 years down the road and you can get probably well over 500000 depending on where it is. So, I mean, it's great potential for long-term wealth. Passive income. Rental properties can generate a steady stream of passive income through rental payments. Absolutely. Um, absolutely, absolutely true. Because you don't really have to be there, right? You can just collect, 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 and go about your day as if you had nothing else to do. And diversification. Real estate can provide diversification benefits to an investment portfolio, reducing overall risk. I mean... It's, it's real estate across the board, but what you do with the property, types of property you invest in, that allows for the diversification that we're speaking about. However, mm -hmm, there are also risks associated with real estate investing, including the high upfront costs. Real estate investing typically requires a significant upfront investment, including the down payment, closing costs, and ongoing maintenance costs. Because, I mean, even if you fix the place up from day one, Having tenants, it's going to incur wear and tear. You're definitely going to have to compensate for it and keep your place um, proper if you want to keep your tenant or gain future tenants. Um, is market volatility. Real estate markets can be volatile and property values can fluctuate significantly over time. There's also the tenant risk. Rental properties come with the risk of non-payment or damage caused by tenants which can significantly imp impact cash flow and profits. So, I mean, your tenant <laughs> is renting and um, 
they didn't know it, but they have an anger issue. And anytime something gets them angry, little do you know, they have put a hole in your wall and you don't go in and check because, I mean, you know, it's their private space. Um, but one day, they up and leave, pay you their last month's rent, or they don't tell you when they leave, and then they go in there and there's an entire mess. The now needs to be sorted out with funds and, and you know, manpower, etc. You really need to pay attention to your tenants and the risk that they may impose probably come up with better ideas to make sure that you have somebody that can um, do what they say they will do and not take advantage of the situation being in the home that you created for them, you know? So guys, that was the um, types of investments that we're going to cover in this article. Obviously, we would do other articles where we cover different types of investments or maybe build on the ones that we have provided here today. And we'd also do ones where um, that are focused on a particular investment route and we would probably go into more detail. I mean, we can't do everything in one video. Um, and those videos may be shorter and a little bit more engaging. Um, but these are just to get these basics out of the way so that we have the idea and we can take this article and say, okay, look, they put this forward and I feel like I'm interested in this, so I want to look more into that. And then you, you check out all the videos to really get into it, you know? So now we're going to take a look at investment strategies. And everybody needs a strategy because that's your set way of doing things. And if you don't have a strategy, you just may end up all over the place with your investments and we definitely don't want that. So uh, firstly, we have in passive investing. And what passive investing is, is a strategy where an investor aims to match the performance of a market index, such as the S&P 500, rather than trying to beat it. This approach involves investing in index funds or exchange traded funds, also known as ETFs, that track the performance of a particular index. Passive investors believe that over the long term, the market tends to go up, so their portfolio will also go up, right? So how does passive investing work? Well, passive investing works by investing in a, in a diversified portfolio of stocks that mirror the performance of an index. The idea is to hold on to these investments for the long term and avoid frequent buying and selling of individual stocks. Passive investors typically have lower fees and taxes since there is less buying and selling of individual stocks. Because, um, you know, when you take a broker, um, they basically take a fee for things like purchases and, and if you're selling. So the more that you do that, the more you incur. So being passive tends to save you money in that regard. Now, there are some advantages of passive investing. Otherwise, nobody would do it, right? So passive investing is a relatively easy and straightforward approach to investing. Investors do not need to spend significant amounts of time researching um, individual stocks or actively managing their portfolio. Passive investing can also offer lower fees and taxes compared to active investing, making it an attractive option for many investors. So, I mean, time, as they said, you don't need to spend crazy amounts of time because even if you, you do significant research on a company before investing in them, you're in it for the long term. So there's no need to continually vet other um, corporations or other um, investments or companies or anything to take up your time. You just do your proper research at the start and that carries you through that time period for however long you decide to hold on to your stock for, right? And that is the advantage. Now, how do we invest in stocks online using passive investing? Well, investors can invest in passive index funds or ETFs through an online broker. They can choose to invest in a variety of index funds, such as the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, or NASDAQ. You know, it all depends on what you're in for. Active investing. Active investing involves buying and selling individual stocks to try to outperform the market. 
active investors believe that they can identify undervalued stocks and outperform the market by buying these stocks. This approach requires significant research and analysis of individual companies and industries, right? Because if you're continuously selling, then you're continuously buying. And if you're doing that with multiple companies, then obviously you're going to have to be researching all these things that we spoke about before, knowing the, um, the corporation, its leaders, how the economy is going to impact the, the price of your stock or, or its value. You know, it takes continuous research. Um, so how does active investing work? Well, active investors aim to outperform the market by selecting individual stocks that they believe are undervalued or have the potential for high growth. They may use various strategies such as fundamental analysis or technical analysis to evaluate individual companies and make investment decisions. Now, these techniques and um, fundamental analyses can be further looked into once we get to those articles. Like I said, this is just basically touching the surface. This is kind of like knowing, do I want to do business or science? And you get like a very, very rough outlook on both, and then you can choose. So please don't be worried about what do these things mean? How do I do this? It will come in the future if, the, if it is that you decide to invest in stocks and whatnot. So advantages of active investing. Active investing offers the potential for return for higher returns compared to passive investing. If the investor can identify undervalued stocks or stocks with high growth potential, active investors can also adjust their portfolio to take advantage of changing market conditions, which can be difficult with a passive investment strategy. How to invest in stocks online using active investing? Well, like we just said, you can do it through an online broker. And you would need to research individual companies and evaluate their financial health and their potential for growth and use valuation metrics to make investment decisions that are sound. Now, I know we're talking about stocks a lot, especially with the investment strategies, but please keep in mind that these don't apply to stocks only. It's just strategies. Even though we speak more about it in, from a stock perspective, it's the same with bonds, really. You just need to apply your technique to what you're investing in. You know, for example, if it's real estate and you want to be passive with that, then you could probably be in for the long run with, with um, the, the appreciation of the market. You know, so like I said, it really applies to everything, but we just narrow it down to stocks here in our examples. So then we have value investing. Value investing is an investment strategy where an investor seeks out stocks that are undervalued based on their intrinsic value. Value invest investors believe that the market can sometimes undervalue good companies. So they look for stocks that are trading at a discount to the intrinsic value. If they believe that this stock should be well over $100 and they see it selling for $80 per stock, $90, they're definitely going to jump on that train because they know it's worth more and they know that the market is soon going to realize that. And that's why they um, they basically have invested in the value of the item, in the value of the stock, in the value of the property, not just in um, its current market value. So how does value investing work? Like I said, they look at stocks um, that are trading at a discount to their intrinsic value based on now they don't just guess they don't just say okay these people look like they know what they're about oh my gosh they are building a jet they're gonna make good money or you don't know right because that jet could crash and burn but they use various metrics such as price to earnings ratios price to book ratios and dividend yield they believe that these stocks or whatever it is you choose have the potential for growth as the market corrects itself and the stock prices rises to its intrinsic value. Because I mean, there's no denying when somebody has a great product, right? Or a great service that they're eventually gonna be seen for it, you know? Um, some companies came out and started as really small companies, it's a humble mission, and they stumble upon something that changes the outline of humanity. And, you know, we may not get it at the time, but 
people who do value invest and in, they notice or see the signs and think to themselves, okay, this is a sound investment. And then it pays off big time. You know, but you also have to be careful. So there are advantages of value investing. Value investing offers the potential for high returns if the investor can identify undervalued stocks. This strategy can also offer a margin of safety since the stock is already trading at a discount to its intrinsic value. Now, what they mean here is that should you purchase a stock value at $90 with an intrinsic value of $100, the obvious fact that the market is going to correct itself and that stock will eventually, undoubtedly, acquire its intrinsic value of selling at at least $100, all right? That is um, the margin of safety on the top of all because you're already closing that gap between your initial investment and their intrinsic value. But that is not to say that once they reach that intrinsic value, that it won't go upwards from there because you could think, okay, they're worth 100 and you buy them at 18, but they could go well over to $160, $300. There's really no limit, you know? So there's definitely that safety net there that should anything occur, at least you acquire um, its intrinsic value, or it's very sure that you'll acquire at least the intrinsic value on the top, or whatever else you decide to, to do. So, how to invest in stocks online using value investing. So as we said, usually, especially stocks, you'd have to go through an online broker, right? And obviously research would need to be done on the individual companies. As we mentioned, we need to really properly vet their financial health and potential for growth. We need to use the proper tools such as valuation metrics, um, like price to earnings ratios, price to book ratios, and dividend yield to really determine if that stock is actually undervalued. It's really just not a guessing game out there. Everything needs to be researched, and for good reason, too. I mean, it's your money, your earnings, your hard work, your sweat that's being put into these things. And failure to really put in the time just puts your entire investment at risk, and that's not a good thing. So finally, we have growth investing. And growth investing is an investment strategy where an investor seeks out stocks that have the potential for high growth. Growth investors believe that these stocks will continue to grow at a faster rate than the overall market, leading to higher returns. Right? So how does that work? Well, they look for stocks that have high potential for growth in revenue and earnings. Now, they typically invest in companies that are in the early stages of growth, such as technolo technology or biotech companies. These stocks often have high valuations and may not pay dividends, but growth investors believe that they will generate significant returns in the long term. So, I mean, that comes down to research again, right? You really need to do your homework and see who is coming out um, and what they're really about and the people that work for them and are they promising candidates for whatever it is they're doing. It takes time. But again, time is your friend. Because with time comes money. Right? So let's look at the advantages for growth investing. It offers the potential for high returns if the investor can identify and I mean properly identify companies that have potential for growth. This strategy can also provide diversification since growth stocks often come from different industries and sectors, right? I know we say that the diversification a lot, but I mean, nearly everybody has heard to don't put all your eggs in one basket, and that is absolutely important, right? Because we don't want the basket to fall on every single egg that we have to break. Or don't put all their money in one pocket. Because you don't want to pull it out and then it all falls down, gets lost somewhere, and then that's it, folks. So how to invest in stocks online using growth investing? Well, straightforward again, you obviously need an online broker. Really, for anything you're going to do. Once you're going to purchase a stock, you need an online broker. And you need to 
uh, research individual companies, evaluate their potential for growth and revenue and earnings, and determine if that stock really is a good investment. Again, it just takes time, commitment, uh, proper planning, and you know, you're well on your way to sound investments. It, it may not all go as planned, but again, with diversification there and the little things that we have to help mitigate those risks, it, it makes it a lot easier. And we're going to get to that in this next topic, which is creating an investment plan. Investment plans are super important. It's kind of like a business plan, but for investors. Um, it is your tutorial, something that you're really supposed to follow to get the most out of these endeavors because again it's no um it's no game gambling with the money that you have right because if it was if it was that then i tell you just waltz over to a casino and bet all your chips on red um but we're here to learn and to ensure that regardless of what we choose that our investment is going to produce some sort of growth and that requires us really, really taking all these little pointers into consideration and applying them to our, our purchase and decisions in the future. So with that said, um, let's move on to creating an investment plan. So the first thing we have as any other plan is to set goals. And in this case, we'll be setting investment goals. So investing is the process of committing money to an endeavor with the expectation of earning a profit or material result like we've said before right now investing can be long term or short term which is based on the strategy that you choose and it helps people to reach their financial goals setting investment goals is absolutely crucial as it helps you to determine the types of investments to make and the amount of risk to take. Now, these are very important points, and you're going to see why in a few short minutes. Um, but just take heed that this is things to really pay attention to, right? So when setting investment goals, it is essential to consider what you want to achieve from investing. Some goals could be buying a house, saving for retirement, paying for your child's education, as we've used in an example prior to this. Knowing your goals will help you create a plan that suits your needs. So, for example, if your goal is buying a house, then you know you have to look at the properties that you want, the communities you want them in, to get a, a proper financial, a proper figure as to what you need. Right? Once you know what you need, it helps you to, to understand about how to go about getting that. For example, if you're a kid and you're in high school, you know, okay, I want a laptop. I need a laptop. What am I going to do to get this laptop? What do I have to do to get this laptop? This laptop that I need or want costs $200, right? You know that if you work on the weekends for X amount of time, then you know how much money you would accumulate by a certain time and if that money meets your goal of purchasing that said laptop. So then when you do that, you're not just all over the place with, oh, I need to make as much money as I can make. Because then that would involve taking riskier investments than you probably, probably, probably need to. And then that runs you at a greater risk for losing everything. So definitely, um, realizing what your goals are what you need is absolutely absolutely crucial if you want to have um something positive come out from this so when setting investment goals like i said please consider what you want to achieve from investing then we have to determine the risk tolerance and a key factor that determines the success of investing is understanding your risk tolerance now, risk tolerance refers to the amount of risk you are willing to take with your investments. The higher the risk, the higher the potential return, and the more substantial the loss. To determine your risk tolerance, you need to consider your financial situation, your investment experience, and personal preferences. This information will help you identify the level of risk you could handle. And what they mean is that you're not going to 
you are not going to take a second mortgage on your house to invest uh, $50,000 into um, an investment idea when you know if you lose that money as per risks that may be involved in your um, in your investment that you stand the chance of losing your home or that should you lose your home that's the end of it for you your finances don't don't have a way for you to return from that you know and then you're not especially not going to take that fifty thousand and invest it all in, in you know a portfolio per se um if you know that your ex investment experience is little to none because then you're looking at greater risks already so risk tolerance is really how much can you stand to lose comfortably do you have twenty thousand dollars put aside um that you have no obligations no pre-existing obligations to use it for you know do you have ten thousand that you can use and if you lose that ten thousand does it affect you in any way that is absolutely going to throw off everything that you've worked for in life this is all risk tolerance and it's not to be taken lightly at all so then we have building a diversified portfolio diversification is a strategy that reduces the risk of investing by spreading your investments across different asset classes by investing a diversified portfolio you can protect your investment from market fluctuations building that diversified portfolio involves investing in a mix of assets such as stocks bonds and cash each asset class has its risk and return characteristics by investing in different asset classes you can achieve a balance between risk and return and this is really important we've been talking about diversification through all this entire article repeatedly over and over we've heard the term and that is because no matter what you're always going to make an investment that is probably not so great and one that is really good and should you pull all of your resources into one it's really a 50 50 gamble or maybe a you know a, a one fifth gamble depending on how many investments that you make that you're gonna come out on top but should you really put eggs in different baskets as we said and we really spread all your purchases over the different asset classes should one crumble to the ground you're left with four of them should two take a hit you're still left with three to brace the impact of losing those two you know so should we want to continue investing continue growing our finances the best thing to do is to prevent um entirely losing our initial investments because then that's going to cripple us and then we'd have to build a capital again before we make future investments and these kind of things it's really going to throw us off our timeline and we're getting to that so now we're going to talk about establishing an investment timeline so an investment timeline is the period in which you plan to hold your investments it is crucial to establish an investment timeline as it helps you determine the types of investments to make and the amount of risk to take investment timelines can range from short term which is considered less than one year to long term over 10 years the investment timeline should be aligned with your investment goals for example if you are saving for a short-term goal, goal you may invest in low risk assets such as bonds or money market bonds right so um short term you're looking at um like day traders and stuff like that as well and what they're telling you is that you you want to you want to retire at the age of 50 you're 40 years old um you can take the time into consideration and not rush the process because you know that you have 10 years to work with and should you make rash decisions um you can greatly impact your retirement fund so you don't have to rush to be ready in five years you can take your time gain experience over that period and really um 
excel in your investment strategies and and really you know take into consideration all these steps and improve yourself over that 10 year span rather than rushing it down in five years when it's absolutely not needed before 10 you know so uh, that's what they mean you really need to um evaluate uh when you need what you need and move on from from there move forward from there last but not least evaluating and adjusting the plan over time investing is not a one-time event it is an ongoing process it is essential to evaluate your investments periodically and make adjustments as needed you're not going to invest in a company um and three years has passed and you don't even check in on your investment and little do you know that stock if it was a stock is has been declining year after year and you're just sitting at home making a loss on your money that you think you have there growing because of your negligence to check on that stock so really it's not a one-time thing evaluating your investment involves reviewing your portfolio's performance how well you're doing you know is it making money is it not is it is it making money that i need in the timeline that i have set you know you have to assess your risk tolerance over and over because situations may change where you may be um needing more money before or less or that your financial decisions may totally impact your lifestyle for example you may have had a family when you first started investing and then the risk of losing that investment means that your family doesn't eat on a particular day right you have analyzing your investment goals because goals may change for example that same family you'd now need to send a child to school you have to pay for that what do you need to pay when do you need to pay it by the investment goals will change so life life changes can absolutely throw things off along with market changes so we really need to keep up to date if your portfolio is not performing as expected you would obviously need to make adjustments to your investment strategy right so in conclusion with this investing can yes be daunting but it doesn't have to be and it certainly doesn't have to keep you back setting investment goals determining your risk tolerance building that diversified portfolio and establishing the investment timeline while evaluating and adjusting that plan as you go can absolutely assist you in investing with confidence all of those steps put together is simply like adding another strand to the entirety making the entire plan stronger because each part by itself is not strong enough but together they would get you <clears throat> through really good um get you to really good investments to learn how to invest in stocks online or investing for beginners you can seek guidance as well from a financial advisor or any online investment platform such as the website which i am um, hinted to earlier like i said it's going to be in the description below along with any other socials that we have we'll leave links for that as well investment tools and resources so these are just important things that you should have knowledge about um, some things may be redundant but just so you are sure that you get the entire picture we put it back and, and reiterate because i mean not everybody gets it the first time right so we have online brokerages these are companies that allow investors to buy and sell securities online they typically offer a range of investment options including stocks bonds and mutual funds choosing the right online brokerage is essential for anyone looking to start investing in stocks online some factors to consider when choosing an online brokerage includes fees investment options research tools and customer service they are all important because you definitely don't want to be paying more fees than you should be and your research tools should be intuitive and user friendly your customer service you should be able to reach out when you have an issue if you want to know what happened with your purchase or your sale or whatever it is to put your mind at ease because these things can be really tugging at your heartstrings at certain times so you definitely want to have customer service set up there what we mean when we say how to invest in stocks online well investing in stocks online again can be daunting especially if you're a beginner but it's important to have a solid understanding of how the stock market works and to do research before investing 
to that unless you always have to do your research. One way to start or get started is to open an account with an online brokerage that offers educational resources, resources such as articles and tutorials. And it's also a good idea to start with small investments and diversify your portfolio. Now, they mean what they what they say when they say open an account with an online brokerage and familiarize yourself with their software. Different brokerages have different um, softwares and stuff, right? Some of them even give you um, a virtual trading tool where you trade um, with virtual money, but on real time markets. Um, so you would see that you can make purchases with your stocks and um, whatnot, um, real stocks in real time and see the market changing. Um, but just practice with fake money where there is no risk associated and then that could tell you like will give you an idea of if you're ready to actually make investments depending you know so definitely look that up they have investment apps which are mobile applications that allow users to invest in stocks bonds and other securities they're a great option for those who want to invest on the go and don't want to deal with the hassle of using a traditional online brokerage um, when choosing an investment app, it's important to consider as well the same thing, fees, investment options, and user experience. Because you definitely don't want to be sitting there and saying, what is this? Did they code this thing in Greek? You know, so definitely, definitely pay attention to those. We then have investing for beginners. Um, there are many resources available to help you get started. There are online brokerages, again, investment apps, and financial advisors, which can all offer valuable guidance and education right it's also important to do your research and to start small you don't want to bite off more than you can chew and you definitely don't want to just be hopping around the trail guessing at every investment that you make you want them to be informed decisions so then you can when we say financial advisors we are speaking about professionals who offer investment advice and guidance they can help you develop a comprehensive investment strategy and provide ongoing support. When choosing a financial advisor, it is important to consider factors such as their credentials. You don't want to go to any old quack who barely pass their courses and, and whatnot to offer financial advice. Um, depending, there are a lot of reasons for that, but credentials, they speak volumes. Um, their fees, they don't want to pay, and their investment philosophy. You don't want to be dealing with somebody whose philosophy is to do things in the long run. Look at everything in the long term when you are definitely going to be an active investor. You know, so keep in mind those things. Investment forums and communities. They are online platforms where investors can connect, share information and collaborate. They are a great way to learn from others and to get a sense of the broader investing landscape. Sometimes we really need that support um a place where you can just ask questions to real people who have been there and experienced the things that you're going through it's absolutely going to be great to connect with people and really really benefit from those um those interactions some benefits of joining an investment community include access to expert device networking opportunities and educational resources but obviously never take anything at face value still do your own research it's very important um I can't say that enough, so please don't forget. Investment. Investing is a powerful way to build wealth and financial and achieve financial freedom. So whether you're just whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned investor, there are many resources available to help you succeed. By choosing the right online brokerage, investment app, financial advisor, or investment community. You can gain the knowledge and support you need to make smart investment decisions. All right. Um, what we're going to end with in this article is common investment mistakes. The first thing we have to look at is our lack of research. Research is an upset at the entire time an essential part of investing. And not doing enough can lead to costly mistakes. Investors need to thoroughly research a company before investing in a stock or making any investment really. This includes looking at the financial statements, the management team, the industry trends and their competition. It is absolutely crucial to research different investment options to determine the best fit for your portfolio. A well-diversified portfolio 
will help me minimize the risk and maximize returns. So with online research uh, resources available, investors can learn how to invest in stocks online without having to leave their homes. Please do not leave out researching. Absolutely, absolutely important. Timing the market. Trying to time the market is a common mistake investors make. Again, we're not guessing here. Time in the market means trying to buy and sell stocks at the optimal time to make a profit. Well, but this is difficult to do consistently. And it's more important to focus on long-term investing. Market fluctuations are normal and investors should be prepared for them. But trying to time the market can lead to missed opportunities as it is impossible to predict future stock prices accurately. So keep that in mind. Then we have emotional investing. Well, it's pretty straightforward. Emotions can get in the way of sound investment decisions. And it may sound silly, but fear and greed are two emotions that lead to costly mistakes. For example, uh, being afraid could cause an investor to sell stocks when prices drop, while greed may lead to buying too much of a single stock. So, I mean, when you see a price drop and you, you purchase that stock, you're supposed to do research enough to know that that stock price is going to go back up and increase. So don't get scared and sell because you see it drops a little bit or it dips. Because you should expect that. And at the same time, you're not going to see a great stock and just put all the eggs in that basket. Because then you'll make a great loss should anything go wrong. It's, in, it's crucial to have a clear investment plan and stick to it. Investors should avoid making rash decisions based on emotions and instead focus again on long-term goals. Not diversifying. Hmm. Investing in a single stock or industry. Extremely risky. Diversification, as we've said throughout, is essential to minimize risk and maximize returns. It involves investing in a variety of assets, such as stocks, bonds, and real estate, as we've mentioned here. You really should diversify the portfolio across different industries and sectors, adding basically another layer of security. This way, if one industry experiences a downturn, the impact on the overall portfolio will be minimal. Diversification is a key factor in investing for beginners and experienced investors alike. Then we have not having a long-term plan. Investing for the long term is crucial to build wealth. It is essential to have a clear plan that outlines long term goals and steps needed to achieve them. Even if you're a day trader, long term goals are essential. Investors should have a strategy for their portfolio that takes into account their risk tolerance, financial goals, and time horizon, all which would have been covered in creating that plan. It should be reviewed and updated regularly to ensure it remains relevant and aligned with your goals because your goals are ever-changing, so please. So we have some investment terminology. Stocks. We're going to run through them. A third type of investment that represents ownership in a company. They are classified into two, two categories. Common stock and preferred stock, where common stocks allows you to become part owner of the company, giving you the right to vote and participate in different things with regards to the company and receive dividends if the company pays them whereas preferred stock you may not get that right however you get priority in terms of the company's liquidation but they pay their preferred stockholders first then come on stockholders get their shares dividend and capital gains dividends are payments made by a company to its shareholders companies can choose to pay dividends in cash or stock the dividend payment is usually based on the company's profit. Capital gains, on the other hand, refer to the increase in the value of a stock. When you sell a stock for a higher price than you bought it for, you earn a capital gain. You have blue chip stocks. Blue chip stocks are stocks of well-established companies that have a history of stable earnings and dividend payments. They are considered to be low-risk investments and are often sought after. By conservative investors, keep in mind that those stocks may be the more expensive stocks on the market. Then you have bonds. Bonds are a type of investment that represent a loan made by an investor, an investor to a borrower, like we said. Right? They are classified into two categories, coupon rate and yield. Now, the coupon rate is the 
interest rate that a bond pays to its holder. The rate is fixed at the time the bond is issued and is paid on a regular basis until maturity. The yield is the total return that an investor earns on that bond. And it includes both the coupon payments and any capital gains or losses that the investor realizes when the bond is sold. Your credit rating and maturity date. Credit rating is a measure of a bond issuer's credit worthiness. It indicates the likelihood that the issuer will default on its payments. The higher the credit rating, the lower risk of default. The maturity rate of a bond, however, is the bond is the date on the bond when the um, bond will be redeemed by the issuer. Which is just maturity date. Real estate. Real estate is a type of investment that involves owning property. Obviously, there are different ways to invest in real estate, which we've gone over, including the rental properties, commercial properties, the REITs, etc. Equity and mortgage in real estate. Equity refers to the value of a property that is owned outright by the investor, where mortgage refers to the loan taken out by the investor to purchase said property. The rental income is the income earned by the investor from renting out the property, whereas the property value refers to the current value of the property in the market. How to invest in stocks online, because we've said that a lot. Investing in stocks online is a popular way to invest, right? Um, it in involves using an online brokerage platform to buy and sell stocks. Now, before investing in stocks online, it is important to research the company and understand its financial health, definitely, right? Investing for beginners, um, we know we need to start small, yeah, and gradually increase um, the investments because we will be gaining knowledge as we go, gaining experience. It's also important to diversify, again, in different types of investments. And when you say investment, it is a crucial aspect of financial planning. No matter what you do, you need to have investments there for that rainy day. It helps you to grow wealth and generate passive income. However, it always comes with risks, and it's important to understand those risks in order to help us make the informed decisions. Because understanding our risk tells us how to move forward. All right? So it's been great having you here today, guys. Um, I know it was long. But I really, really appreciate you sticking it out with me till the end. Um, please don't be afraid to comment if you have anything important that you have to say or if you have any future videos that you'd like us to do. We would love to hear from you guys as usual. Um, don't be shy. Please like and subscribe and click that bell icon so that you'd be updated or notified when it is we uh, release new content. Um, again, it was great to have you guys here. And I hope your investments go well. Mm -hmm. Take everything that we've told you and apply it and you won't have any issues. Do your, your research and um, when you really narrow down on that thing that you want to invest in, um, you know, don't be shy, check us out. We may have tips for that um, for you or you'd have to go elsewhere and that's okay, you know, but be safe, do that research, make those sound investments, make money, and we'll see you in the next video. Okay, guys. Bye.